Hi, this is uh, Franz Cantor, Toon Talker, cartoonist and illustrator, and I'm here with... Jim Bridges. I'm left-handed and I'm the president of the Australian Cartoon Museum. Well, we won't hold that against you. This is, uh, today we're doing a uh, book review on The Prince of Egypt, A New Vision in Animation, which was written by Charles Solomon and published by Abrams. This came out in, uh, just before the film, actually in 1999. Mm, let's get so into it. So you can it. see it's... Uh, Quite an auspicious looking tome. Born a slave, raised, raised by, by kings, kings chosen, chosen to lead. To lead. Wow, isn't that great? So this was uh, one of the um, this is one of the Spielberg um, uh, uh, DreamWorks uh, animation extravaganzas before they uh, they were enamoured by um, the Pixar style and went over into 3D. Now, this was quite a shock to me, actually, having seen a couple of Pixar films in the interim. Um, it was a shock to see such um, beauty on the screen. I was uh, completely knocked out by it. And I'll tell you, in a no there are a number of ways that this film stands the test of time, certainly for uh, any collection, any serious animation collector. One is the sense of, sense of grandeur. As you can see in the title, a new vision in animation. What's new about 2D animation? Let me tell you. The scale. Yes, the scale. The scale, and, and they use colour as a character. Yeah. This is one of the first times, I think, if not the, the first time, that they used um, colour to um, show the moods, the yeah. moods of the film. So the film itself had moods, you know, had sad moments and happy moments. And these were reflected by um, the use of colour. This is an absolutely stunning... Um, mm. Well, this, this shows you the scale. I mean, and yeah. they, they put everything together. They put everything together, and yeah. of course it's not. So lying. these are con This is concept art. These yeah. are concept art. The covers concept art, but it gives you an idea very quickly of what what you're in for here. Okay, so some of the early uh, sketches of the uh, they really, you know, when they re research a film of this scale, they go all out in terms of uh, research. You know, both to uh, create a sense of drama and also to give you an inkling into the history or the story or the possible history of the time. In the film, uh, it's got a great introduction. It yeah. starts with the races. They go through all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And they go past and you get the feeling they're building the pyramids. And the, bu the pyramids, the scale is like twice, three times the height of what they actually were. Yeah. So they're exaggerated for drama, heightened drama. Yeah. But everything, all the designs you can appreciate, um, the animals and everything, were in accordance to the to the style of the film. So the characters were stylized in a very spe specific way. In in many respects, it's um, it was out Disneying Disney. This film. Yeah, and it's a it's a story that everybody knows. You yeah, know? Um, everyone's familiar with the you know Moses story of Moses and the bulrushes. But um, it actually uh, like you know the Ten Commandments, you know. Mm. But it becomes a love story between two men, and it's really beautiful and moving. Yeah, and it's, so it's, rough, an, it's an animated it's and, an elf, um, elf animated sorry it's an animated film, and yet it really touches you about their relationship. Yeah, Moses and. Um, Ramesses. Yeah, Ramesses, yeah. So Ramesses is voiced by, uh, I think, Ralph Fiennes and uh, Moses is, Moses and God, actually, is voiced by... Um, um, and look at that. It just That's not in the film, but it gives you that. That's the scale, that's the scale they're looking for. Yeah. There's the plot there from Karnak, which is not where... Well, these, these are what these are used for in a film is to give the animators and yeah. give everybody in the production a sense of what, what we're doing. So these are the production paintings, the, the pre-production paintings, if you will. Yeah. Um, it's so, a I mean, the, the word is colossal. It's well, the only way you could describe the, it. The story. idea is you work out a lot of problems, you solve a lot of problems in pencil because animation is very expensive, especially 2D animation. And um, you also put in possible um, uh, 
direction for you know fashion or design characters animation and here she's with her big wig her huge wig yeah so this uh started out with the you know the uh, the uh, pre-production sketches the direction that they were taking and this is you know before they put the lid on <laughs> Yeah, but it gives you a, you know, a beautiful, this, you know, the Egypt, ancient Egypt, or mm. this version of ancient Egypt mm. is... Uh, it's the fresh, brand new ancient Egypt. That's yeah. what you're looking at. That's yeah. what they wanted to get. Whereas in, you know, a lot of the other films of this story, um, they focus on the... The biblical, the biblical aspect of it, you know, God, yeah. and they, the religious part of it, or they focus on the drama, the human drama. Let my people go. Yeah, the this story. is a musical, actually. Yes. So what they're trying to do is have you, um, uh, in, you, you really involve yourself in the the narrative. Well, they in the narrative, music, they use music a lot. As, as pushing the narrative along. Exposition, it, yeah. It, it, it's like a it's like a modern it's like a modern musical and an animated. Actually, it's probably one of the best animated films using music that I know of. Yeah. And it's not just because the music's nice or the song's great. It's how they're used. They push the na narrative along and illustrate the, the story the whole time. Yeah. So they they very quickly um, designed these um, quite. Um, elongated figures, very um, uh, geometric styled faces and bodies and right down to the architecture and the uh, the animals and the chariots etc. So that gave it, that gave it a sense of um, place. Everything had its place in the film, everything fit. Palm trees, they had a house, it was sort of like developing I guess a house style. Yeah. So these are incredibly valuable for a, a production. Just to, just to have these up on the wall. Um, here you get more production sketches. Um, actually, are these from the these these might be actually from the film itself. Yeah, well, this these actually are, happens. This from the they actually run these up, and yeah. it's so scary. Um, I mean, it, it's one thing. They're dangerous on the ground, but when they start running up these uh, scaffolding, mm. it's very scary. difficult to storyboard, as you can imagine, because yeah. the camera is very organic in this shot, seems to be moving right yeah. through it. Interesting how they're, they're painting the, the, the statues, the ancient statues, mm. the large ones. Yeah, so this is um, a very special film. Yeah. When you see it, it makes sense. It's uh, incredibly um, majestic. The shots are incredibly majestic. Yeah, um, a lot of people didn't like the choice of voices. Yeah, for some of the actors. Beautiful. But um, yeah, the uh, you know I can forgive them uh, their uh, their their choices. I actually thought uh, Val Kilmer as Moses and God did a, a, an excellent performance. Um, they gave me chills. When uh, you know he had a conversation with uh, himself as God in the film. Mm. I think everybody's got the, the Ten Commandments uh, by uh, Cecil B. DeMille stuck in their permanent. Yeah, well, this will um, fix this will fix the problems that that's caused in your consciousness. <laughs> yeah, I mean that. that a... I'm not a fan of the Cecil B. DeMille um, films, but uh, I won't tell Scorsese. Or... No, quite. I'm not a fan of it. I'll tell you why. This film in It's got Catholic guilt in it. <laughs> well, I'm not a Catholic. But the, um, the reason why I don't like it is because it's um, extremely melodramatic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And doesn't give you a sense of place. So everything well, has a certain they use, has a they use caricature and scale in this to actually make it bigger and better than any, any yeah. Egypt in your imagination. Mm. It outdoes your imagination, this mm. film. Mm. Yeah, you can see the, how the colours are telling stories here. You know, I mean, this is a conversation essentially in shadow. It's you know, it's very dark. It's it's almost like looking at it, peering into the picture. Um, 
And this this is animation, so but, this is but as unusual. You, as you said at the beginning, it's all about mood. The mood sets it up, and the, the emotional the... mood is very strong in this film. Very strong. Yeah. So that's just beautiful. Look at it. So the, these is these are like almost like caricatures of yeah. uh, Nefertiti. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the um, Egyptian reliefs. You're getting closer to. Um... The, um, the original, um, how, how they turn up in the film. Yeah. yeah. Well, these are these are final drawings yeah. of the characters. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pity we can't discuss the music. Very here. interesting designs. The music's integral to the, the film as well. It I mean, is. The, to me, the strongest thing is the is the music and the colour mm. and the scale. The scale's just... Yeah, well, there's a perfect jaw, example. Jaw there's, dropping. There's a production sketch, colour production sketch, yeah. and that gives you the idea of scale. Yeah. This is... Um, these are the sort of... The, the scale that... That we used in it. The, the, in the film. In the Tutankhamun mm. find. Yeah, and... The, the, well, the character... There's a sequence of, that is a dream sequence where all these characters on the wall, um, mm. the hieroglyphics come alive. And that's what people remember about the film. It's a really, you get the feeling you're watching something you've never seen in an animated film before at yeah. that moment. And they, they, they peel around yes. columns. Yeah, they run around the corners. Yeah. yeah. And hide yeah. behind and they, the architecture. And they tell the story. They tell the story yeah. using, um, yeah, using hieroglyphics. Yeah, so it starts out with Moses going into this hall. He doesn't know the history of the yeah. murder of the Jewish babies. Yeah. So, the firstborn. So, um, and that's ordered by the Pharaoh, which is his father in the film, his yeah. adopted father. So um, this is pivotal. So here is where in the film, the colors start to change. Yes, they get more and here's more Here's the sequence dramatic. where he gets scared and he runs away. That's yeah. Be that's beautifully done, isn't it? Is, is he running away from his destiny or towards his destiny? We will not know for five minutes. Um, yeah, until the scene changes. So that's the end of Act One. So at end of Act One, the colours start to change. They get even more the ibis are different, aren't yep. they? The ibis, they're fatter than any ibis yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah, we so. have we have ibis in Australia. I, I, I was as a kid, I thought they all flew they flew all the way from, yeah. from Egypt to Australia. So Act Two is more of a mystical journey here. Yeah, he's in the wilderness, and um, these are paintings that reflect the day and night. You know, the the the, the heat of the sun. Look at the, the scale isolation, again. The isolation. Yeah, but you know, the whole idea of this is man is is tiny. Yeah. God is big. You know, the world yeah. is big, but man is tiny. We're just like a little ant. Look at us, a little ant, in the in the landscape. You know. That's right out of. Um, Beautifully drawn. Look at that. Indiana Jones. Yeah, when they go to Petra. Mm, Petra. Again, more, more paintings, production paintings that uh, didn't make it into the final, uh, the final film, but certainly gave everybody on the production a sense of uh, purpose and scale. I mean, look at Moses here and standing in before a dust storm. Mm. Now, this biblical proportions. Exactly. This whole idea, of course, was used in the recent Mad Max film. Yeah. But it gives you again the idea of tiny man, big nature. Footprints in the sand. Yeah. Got to have some footprints in the sand. So, yeah. The writer's uh, charge is named this Through Heaven's Eyes. And now we're getting into more of the where he uh, meets um, the daughters of Midian, the, uh, um, his wife. What's the bloke he meets? The, um, the father of... Um... Yeah, here he is. He's accepted in the family because he's, he's wandering. There's the... Yeah. yeah, I forget his name. But it's beautifully done, and it, it, it's well, it, Zipporah, squash, Zipporah, the, the other, they're Bedouins. Yeah. So Z, these are sketches, early sketches of Zipporah. You can start to see now the um, the beautiful caricature of these explorations of um, you know different ethnic beauties. Yeah, and um, you get the feeling that you're looking at a three-hour film. There's so much story there squashed in, and they use it. To, they use the colour and the music to do that. Mm. It, yeah, something to be really proud of. Yeah, um, this film. Um, it's a beautiful sequence. Yeah. 
You don't get to see that in the film. Mm. Act three. Yeah. The burning bush. Well, is it act three? Yep. It's act, act three. It is. Cool. Okay, good. Now, the burning bush, of course, um, this is the spookiest part of the film. If you ever see any uh, representation of the burning bush in film um, and you find something better than this, um, we want to know about it. We, we want to know, know about, about it. it. Yeah, yeah. this right. I've never seen anything like this before. This gave me goosebumps on my goosebumps. Well, it had to because that's God. That's yeah. the God representing himself. Well, if on you earth. think about it, they've chosen to do. You know, Val Kilmer is obviously the voice of Moses. So they actually did um, uh, the voice of God, which is sort of like Val Kilmer. I think recorded three or four times over itself so the same words slightly out of sync so it gave him oh, yeah. like a, 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 a almost a host like a choral yeah, aspect a cosmic to his voice. E echo well very very but it was but, a whisper but yeah, the whisper yeah. was loud yes so that gave you a, a presence a uh, an indication of uh, size and um, you know again small man big nature so everything, attention to detail was was maximum in yes. this movie. Yes. So um, the design of you know Richard Chavez's uh, tree here for the burning bush, it had this torturous quality, this um, yeah. incredible um, attention to detail, but but um, stylized at the same time. This was no mere bush. This was no mere bush. No. This is something special. Yeah. So this this attention to detail and love of the character design. Well, they had to the they had to come up with something as was I in said. every frame. Yeah, and this is this. And that's is why this film typical. stands stands out to be. Uh, um, so he comes back. He comes back to Egypt because he has to um, get yeah. his people free. So how do you show a horde? Right, you've got to show detail. You've got to yeah. show who's who's. Um, you know who's in the scene Moses yeah. and his wife and the context you know, riding into um, yeah. that's classic isn't it into Egypt going down into the Sephora yeah. and um, you know it's a framing device yeah it's a foreground and this incredible panoramic background this huge background with the millions of ants again so we're looking at the little and the big and this is where they scale. they trade um, powers yeah, um, the magic tricks of turning um, yeah. staves into snakes. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes a little bit um, to it, it like. Um, well, there's comedic elements yes. in here with um, uh, the two comedians. I can't remember the name. But the the thing is, it's it's, it's um, um, normally in a film like this. Um, this has a seriousness besides a comedy part of it. Well, they they have these. They have a sinister undertone. Yeah, yeah. They have a comedic layer yeah. on top yeah. and a pan, and a banter. Underneath, there's this threat. There's this basic undertone of threat. Yes, yes. They'll kill him. It's about power. It's about your, yeah. you know. You don't question the power, and of course, the arrogance of power is what comes through with uh, Ramesses. So yeah. he's sort of changed, as Moses has changed yeah. in his quest. Um, similarly, Ramesses hasn't stayed the same either. He's uh, he's grown in the opposite direction to become the um, the perfect. Um, one of his things is he turns the Nile into into blood. Yeah, it's one of the perfect anti. It's beautifully done too. It is. Yeah. I mean, the the plagues. This is the ten plagues. Yeah. Um, the plagues, it's very difficult to do plagues in any film because there's <laughs> ten of them. So after the first couple, it's kind of like, you know, oh, now we've got fleas, have we? All right, okay. Oh, now we've got um, lice, have we? Oh, okay. So they have to sort of um, rush through the plagues in many, yeah. in many cases and then concentrate on the drama that the plagues uh, create, you know. But um, they do it quite well. They do. They, they've, um, you know, I mean, <laughs> these these close-ups of mm. uh, of um, crickets mm. and mm. you know, and the um, and this is like this is the comedic their gods. This their is their gods. Of the frogs. And these are the these are the manifestation of the other god against each other. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, but it also represents nature against man. Yes. Oh, yeah. So the arrogance yeah. of man. Man makes these these objects, yeah. but nature can always destroy it. You know. Yeah. And even nature. Here you have man reflected in the face of nature. Yeah. So that's nature mocking but, man's arrogance. But that's huge, and that's in 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 the. the yeah, it's a close up, obviously, yeah. of a oh, tiny cricket, but yeah. or uh, a locust. But yeah. the um, the 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 object of this is you know that. Um, even though the nature is small in its increments, together it's vast. Oh yeah. So again, we're talking about scale. That's the main message of the of the film. It's how small we really are in the face of all of these things. Here's the first. This is some CG work done, a combination of CG and uh, animation for the, um, the, uh, the 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 burning hail. Yes. Yeah. Um, I love this scene. Sort of. Yeah. This these dark. Un, there's a lot of undertones. A lot of um, he has understated. To, he has to talk with him. There's a lot of understated scenes peppered throughout the film, which act sort of like pauses in between great dramatic moments. Yeah. And this is one of them. And yeah. if you get you catch this one, make sure that you 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 listen to it very carefully, because this is lovingly done. This is. Um... You know, he's just like his father. Yeah. He's and, and so they, they use they, symbols they go back to great the, effect. They yeah, go very, back very to the powerful. story again. They go back to the story, but it's a different, yeah. a different um, situation. Yeah. Now the ending's changing. You're not going to kill the firstborn again. Uh, this is a very dramatic scene of the uh, the angel of death coming down, of course, and killing all the firstborn of the of the uh, yeah. the Egyptians. So the Jews obviously paint um, lamb's blood yeah, over there. on the, uh, the post, uh, the yeah. lintels yeah. above the doors. That's so again, CGI, but beautifully handled CGI. I mean, yeah. CGI in an animated film can look a bit cheesy, but uh, you know, unless you're very careful. Um, and of course, they massaged it very well into the story, into the film. Here we go, Act, act Four, with missing a couple of pages. When you believe, all right. So this is an affirmation, really, where the Jews are um, um, they're released from Egypt out of the despair of the Egyptians. The sh not despair so much yet, but the shock of having to deal with the uh, the angel of death run through their village, through their uh, city. So, <clears throat> difficult scene if you can imagine. And the because... colours come warmer and warmer because it's to do with freedom. Yeah, so they go from the cold, where the maximum cold is yes. almost, um, the angel of death scene yeah. is almost black and white. It's almost black and white. Yeah. See? The yeah. colour's been leached. All yeah. life is leached yep. by the angel of death. Then when you get to here, it's starting to dawn again, so the colours are starting to warm up. Mm. That's the, that's the, um, the main... Uh, um, the main element of uh, of, um, of the of the film. Well, so the second element of the film. First is the scale. The second is the color, and the color is in works beautifully in concert with yeah. the music. Yes, yes, it's a beautiful marriage. Um, yeah. We can't describe music in this talk, but um, maybe in the future we'll have a go at it. Yeah, and it's, it's all this all this looking um, beautiful colours yeah. like it's colour scheme. Yeah. The sunset almost. The and then it's sort of warmth. This is the Red Sea when the, they they go out to catch them. Yeah. You have to get to you've got to get to, at least to the Red Sea in the in a film about the Ten Commandments. So at first before you get to the Red Sea of course there's the pillar of fire. Yeah. So the pillar of fire is uh, beautifully executed again. A combination of CGI and uh, and two uh, D. The, the the film is done with incredible respect too. There's this extraordinary respect about it. Like, well, you'll get to the you'll get to the parting of the Red Sea in a second, yeah. um, and I'll show you where the majesty of this comes from. You can start to see the drama of this, unprecedented. If you look at Charlton Heston. Yeah. You know, touching the water and parting it. Yeah. Um, this is actually more dramatic. Yes. So that was pretty dramatic and stands the test of time. But this, this, unbelievable. On the big, seeing this on the big screen. Well, it's 50. Everybody gasped. Yeah. I can yes. hear yes. everyone in the audience. <gasps> Yeah. Like this, yeah. you know, and obviously they, they they were familiar with the story. Scale again, there yeah. It is. So here you see the <laughs> combination of two D painted of... Um, textures on the three dimensional polygons, the, the um, special effects. Um, 
very, uh, very good use of uh, the two mediums. Scale, yeah, did you talk about scale? Yeah. The scale is, is incredible. Yeah. yeah. And now you get to one of my kid's favorite parts of the film. It's you're like watching through it, this tunnel of water. Yeah, it's like watching a, a film on IMAX, I felt. Yeah. yeah. And even this sort of sequence where you've got this. Yeah, well, it's obviously dark, right? So yeah. the, the sea is, you're right down the bottom of the sea here, yeah. walking through the, through the, through the, sh through the ground. Yeah. And the, the, the waters are forming this sort of tunnel. So it's quite dark. Yeah. That's why they're, they, they've um, lit um, uh, torches. Yeah. Now, through the water, of course, they don't break through, but you can see, you know, whales and uh, large the fishes. Whale shark. And, whale shark. Yeah, the whale shark. And yeah. So this was my, my kid's favorite uh, scene in the whole film. It's because it's like walking through a cathedral. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's right. Look at this. I think I think Da Vinci would like this sort of drawing, wouldn't he? Mm. And it's a new door and they get to the other side. Yeah. This lovely light crossing crossing the, the crowd. Yeah. Yeah, and that's basically it. The rest is all Yeah. The rest is all um well uh well there's small pictures. Notes on the design, yeah. notes on the layout, People who did. notes on the music and yeah. the character design, who did what, you know. Um, the music again, as I said before, very, very cool. It um the other oh, let's let's turn it over so you get the yeah. picture. You want to line me up? Are we right? Uh, yeah, we'll move it up here yeah, a little bit. Down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing about the film is that they didn't, you know, they um, there was hardly any uh, merchandising about this film. No, they had, did have and, some, and all virtually an animation film is the beginning of the merchandising process. They did have some it's, it's very the big ad to set the product off sculptures. Oh yeah, because they created yeah. sculpts of the characters yeah. uh, to to give the animators. So they did have very limited edition um, sculptures available yeah. um, to collectors. But yeah, they were, and they, as they I were said, really they beautifully made too. Yeah. yeah, it's um, it's a standout film. It's. It's well worth seeing the film. Um, you know, it's it's what what it is. It's a it's a, a perfect example of um, how people who love animation, who love art, uh, can tell phenomenal stories. They wanted the people who who set out to make this film. They wanted mir miracles to be miraculously in front of you, and and you believed them. That's what they set out to do, and I think they achieved it. Yeah. Where they'll be framed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. well, this is um, Jim Bridges and Franz Cantor, and I'll catch you next time. Okay. Well.